This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Preface Really a fearsome sight. The road was on a slope of the hill, and the tanks just crawled up the slope, up the right bank, nose in the air, down with a bump into the road and across it, almost perpendicularly up the left bank, and down with a bump behind it, and so up the hill, without a moment's pause or hesitation. Edward Heron Allen, 1918 Edward Heron Allen's account of British tanks crossing a road on October 16, 1918, captured the physicality of tanks, as well as their apparent remorseless ability to subordinate terrain. At this stage, the Allies were successfully advancing against the Germans on the Western Front in Belgium and France at the close of World War I, 1914-18, and tanks were part of the victorious equation. Size, scale, firepower, mobility. The tank, and armoured warfare as a whole, seized the imagination of commanders and commentators concerned about the constraints of its infantry counterpart. However, as so often with innovations, and in particular movement, there could be a failure to see matters in perspective at strategic, operational, and tactical levels. This book, therefore, is a parallel to mine on air power, of which the same is true. Indeed, there is a closer link, because the stress on armour could draw on the same roots as that on air power, while, conversely, an emphasis on aircraft could lead to a downplaying of operations on land, most obviously after World War II, 1939-45. As with air power, an account of armour is a tale of limitations and defeats, as well as potential and achievements. This is that history. There is a standard account of tanks, one of potential unlocked, but only eventually so, and in the face of misunderstanding and misguided opposition. This standard account focuses on innovation and eventual success. Both are seen in World War I, with the tank held responsible for surmounting the constraints of trench warfare in 1918. Then the theme is of brilliant thinkers and innovators in the 1920s and 1930s, and a failure in Britain and France to heed their ideas, but a willingness instead to do so in Germany and the Soviet Union. The latter willingness is then regarded as responsible for Germany's Blitzkrieg triumphs in 1939-41 to in the early stages of World War II, only for German panzers, armour, to be overcome from 1941 by the scale, weather, and numbers of the Soviet Union, factors exacerbated by Hitler's foolish command innovations. Thereafter, the focus switches to other exponents of bold armour advances, from the American George Patton in 1943 to 45, to the victorious Israelis in the Six Day War in 1967. Albeit with a discussion of the Cold War, the popular narrative then runs a bit dry before rising to a conclusion with U.S. successes in the two wars in the Persian Gulf, 1991 and 2003. This book both explains that account and challenges it, adding depth, qualification, context and criticism. In considering the subject, it is important at every turn to remember the danger risked by tankers. Anton Hare, a professional soldier serving in the 21st Panzer Division in 1944, was terrified to suffocate in my tank and burn alive. He survived the war experience. Many did not. For a fictional account, the first few minutes of the 2012 Russian film White Tiger provide a view of the terrible fate of a trapped tank crew when hit.